Okay, we're now joined by Andrew Nimhard to begin today's Gonzaga press conference. Andrew scored 17 points and had eight assists in the 83-65 victory over Creighton. Again, for the media, please use the raise hand function to indicate that you would like to ask a question. When you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. And we're going to begin our questioning with Brenna Green from KREM. Go ahead, Brenna. Hi, Andrew. Just uh, sorry, I'm having a little bit of issues with audio right now, but um, so I apologize if you were asked this already. Um, but uh, you guys just had an absolutely dominant passing performance tonight. Just how fun is it for you to be out there and, and dropping those dimes? Is it, and is it sometimes more satisfying than, than scoring the bucket? Yeah, I think um, that's been our identity all season. I think. We play best when we're just moving the ball because we have so many pieces um, and, and so much versatility. And it's just it's just like playing in the park with a, with a with a bunch of guys that click so well. So it's 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 been really fun. Okay, our next question will come from Jim Meehan with the Spokesman Review. Go ahead. Hey, Andrew, Jim Meehan, Spokesman Review. Uh, you look like your mindset was pretty clear. Attack mode early on. Uh, is, was that the case? And it looked like also they maybe were letting certain uh, guys shoot the three ball, or at least daring you to shoot them. Yeah, yeah. I think um, the coaches told me to be um, start the game off aggressive, and I think um, there were, I was one of those guys, and a few a few other guys were kind of getting dared to shoot. And I think we came out and if we we shot aggressive and shot confidently, and um, they went down early for us, so it was good. Okay, our next question is going to come from Aaron Beard with the AP. Hey, Andrew, I wanted to ask you about defense. You guys ran them off the three-point line, gave up only five, held them below their scoring average. For all the credit you guys get for offense, does your defense get overlooked? I mean, do you think you're a better defensive team than people give you credit for? Most definitely. Most definitely. I think we're very overlooked defensively. I think when we have that side of the ball clicking, is when we're really at our best. And I think um, today we, we locked into the scout and we uh, changed up coverages and they had they had they had some great offense and they were they were they were sticking with us at, at first. Um, but we got we got a few kills and that, that led to kind of our run and our lead. Um, so definitely. Our next question will come from uh, Karthik with K R E M. Go ahead. Hey, Andrew Karthik uh, from Krim2 over in Spokane. Uh, your brother committed to Creighton. Uh, you play for Gonzaga. What have the conversations been like leading up to this game? Any rivalry? Was he pulling for you? What was the deal there? Yeah, I mean, um, he's obviously always going to want to see me do well, and he's not there yet, so um, he's definitely rooting for me, but excited to see me play against his team, and um, I think he's, he's, in, he's in great hands with those guys over there because they, they do a great job for sure. Our next question will come from Dana O'Neill with The Athletic. Hey, Andrew, it's Dana O'Neill with The Athletic. Um, you know, when you first got to Gonzaga, you weren't even sure if you were going to be eligible to play. Um, how easy was it to kind of assimilate into this team and into this offense? Um, I think it was it was really easy, honestly, um, just because of how how the team plays and how I play. I think I, I can I can bring versatility. I can pass. I can score. So they can put me in a different different roles every game. and. Um, I kind of I can plug into different spots easily, and and the way we run and move and move the ball so much, it's just it's easy. For, it's e really easy to fit in. Next question will come from Pat Forty with Sports Illustrated. Uh, Andrew, yeah, I was actually going to ask you a similar question, so I'll change it up. Uh, just wanted to. Ask the role game and the, the number of bounce passes you were able to make to the guys today, and just kind of how that all came together for you. Yeah, I think I was just um, reading the, reading the game, reading what the defense was giving to me, and um, they were kind of um, putting two guys in the ball sometimes, so the pocket pass was, was pretty pretty open. So I'm just finding those guys rolling to the rim. Our next question will come from Lucas Weiss with the undefeated. Go ahead. Hey, Andrew, Lucas Weiss with the undefeated. Congrats on the win. Uh, 
it, it just seemed like when you and Drew were on the court, it, it just seemed like it was effortless for you guys to create offense. Can you speak to that connection that you have with Drew and, and why it's so easy for you both to, to create offense? Yeah, I think um, our connection has grown this whole year, and I think that it's not even just our connection. It's just the way we move our parts off the ball, and, and guys can't get off of Corey when he's lifting. So it just it just makes the, the other guys make it so much easier for us to play that two man game because they're moving and they're they're distracting the help side defense for sure. So it's just it's just basically like two on two at that point. Our next question will come from Kevin Brockway. Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, Andrew, you know, I know you've been through a lot of ups and downs in your uh, basketball career. I mean, beginning all the way back to your high school year when you uh, had your intestinal condition and then going through Florida. What does it mean to you, I guess, to kind of be able to persevere through all that and to perform on this stage? Yeah, it's just exciting. And I'm, I'm just so grateful to kind of be, out, be, out, be able to be out there and playing every day, especially with COVID this year, too. So, um it's just it's just nice to see that that um, I'm back on the court now and and doing good things. Our next question will come from Mark Canizero with the New York Post. Go ahead. Hey Andrew, congratulations. Um, I just have a question. You guys have all talked about the fact that the undefeated record doesn't mean much to you. It's more about winning the title. But I just wonder, as this has continued on for you guys, normally pressure ratchets up a bit. And you guys don't seem to be affected by that at all. I'm wondering what allows you to be as free as you are, you know, when obviously that's kind of hanging over you as, as you know, a great accomplishment. Yeah, I think we always talk about just being us, and we're not we're not too satisfied about um, like winning a championship. What, what we do with each other and how we make each other better, that's what we're more satisfied with every day. And um, so I don't think we see too much pressure in it. And also, at, at this point, every every team has to go undefeated now to win, win the tournament, so it's not really pressure to keep that streak. It's just it's what, it's what it is. Our next question will come from Vincent with the Gonzaga Bulletin. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, hey, Andrew, this is Vincent Sagambeni from the Gonzaga Bulletin. Just wanted to ask you what um, kind of like your takeaways and thoughts were uh, going up against uh, Marcus Zagorowski tonight, um, finished with 19 points and you know there were some points throughout the game where he was you know really hot and getting getting the shots up so i just wanted to ask what your thoughts were um playing against him yeah i thought um i thought he was really good honestly i think he was really quick he got to his shots quick um he attracted attracted um multiple players at times but i think i think Jalen did a really good job on tonight um but no he, he was he was a tough guard he's, he's done really good for them Our next question will come from Gary Horcher with Cairo. Go ahead. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, Gary Horcher, Cairo 7 TV, Seattle CBS. I've heard that your most challenging games are your in-house five-on-fives, and I know you guys are trying to stay humble here, but you just don't look like you have been tested yet. Is there something that you believe that exists with this team that would still surprise America who are unfamiliar with you guys? Are there parts of your game that you have not had to unleash yet. Uh, I'm just wondering if you feel like you've exerted all the horsepower your your team has to offer. No, I definitely, definitely don't. Um, and I think we always talk about just, just squeezing out that last 5%, and especially at this point in the season. Um, we can always get better. We can always, we can always work on things. We can always make adjustments, and, and we always talk about expanding our package. So um, I definitely think we're still improving, and, and, and there's still work we can do. Our next question will come from Isabel Gonzalez. Go ahead. Hey, Andrew. Isabel Gonzalez, Mid-Major Madness. I was watching Drew Timmy's interview with Dwayne Wade, and he talked about the mustache and how that's something he does just to keep things light and, you know, just make things a little bit more fun on the court. Everybody's asking about Drew Timmy's mustache. Yeah. <laughs> how much do little things like that help you guys just to, you know, stay focused but also staying kind of loose? Yeah, I think it's, um, I mean, he's, every every time he has that, that stash, he's been playing well. So I'm, I'm all for the stash, honestly. Um, I think he's he's that type of person with that type of personality. So um, it fits him, and it's something we all, we all, we're all for, honestly, at this point. Are there any other little things that you guys do to also kind of just keep things light? Yeah, I think just naturally, like, the way we warm up, the way we interact with each other, we always keep it light. We, 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 um, 
we don't miss mix business with 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 pleasure, but, but we know we know what our when we kind of have our time to have fun, have our time to kind of get locked in and focus. Our next question will come from Matthew Schianetti. Go ahead. Uh, Matthew Schianetti from TSN. Andrew, uh, so much has been made, Coach Few, saying that he wants you to attack the game, attack the rim. In that first half, are you starting to learn the moments in the game where you can attack, assert yourself, and use your offense? Yeah, I think the the biggest thing for me is to just stay aggressive at all times on the court. I think um, when I get passive, it's um, it's not good for myself and it's not good for the team. So, coaches always stay on me to kind of be aggressive and look to score and look to look to get others involved. And I've been, I think I've been doing that good lately. Okay, we have time for a couple more. John Title, go ahead. John Title from HoopsHD.com. Um, you have a lot of championship game experience. I believe you won a high school national championship and won a silver medal with Canada a few years ago. So my question, what has your experience taught you about what it takes to win a championship? Yeah, I think um, playing on, on good teams in the past, you just you just you get the same feeling from, from playing on those teams and just the camaraderie and the togetherness and, and the, the ability to fight through adversity. I think that's what I see in this team too. Um, well, I think... Um, yeah, that's, that's really what it is. Okay, next question will come from Kurt Burmester. Go ahead. Hey, Andrew, Kurt Burmester, TSN. Uh, you guys have so many weapons offensive and defensively. Do you feel like you guys have even peaked yet? No, I don't think we have peaked. I think that, uh, as I said earlier, that we could, we could always get better and we can always work on our stuff. So I think that we're getting close. We need to squeeze that, that 5% out that we talk about. And our final question will come from Jim Meehan with a spokesman review. I'm good. My question was asked. Thank you. Okay, A Andrew, thanks so much for your time today. Greatly appreciate it. Appreciate you, guys. Thank you. Okay, we're joined by head coach Mark Few. Uh, we'll begin with an opening statement from Coach Few and then go to questions. Again, for the media, please use the raise hand function to indicate that you would like to ask a question. And when you're called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. So, Coach, please go ahead and give us an opening statement, and then we'll go to questions. Hey, it's a great win for us. Uh, once again, I really thought it was our defense that uh, made the difference tonight. They're a, they're a scary offensive unit, especially when you're preparing for them. And, and uh, I thought we did a really, really nice job, especially on the three line. You know, I, I, we knew they wanted to or probably needed to make 10 threes. And, and I thought we really, you know, chased Blaylock all around the floor and we gave up a couple early to uh, Zagorowski, who's really, really, really good. Uh, and then, but by and large, guarded that line really, really good. And then, then I shored up the glass much better uh, in the second half, which uh, got us out running, and that's you know when we're at our best. Okay, thank you, Coach. We'll uh, start our questions with uh, uh, Brenna from K R E M. Go ahead, Brenna. Hi, Coach. You, Brenna Green from Two. Um, you know, tonight you guys had a phenomenal percentage in the paint. And the, one of the huge reasons why was due to your guys' passing. Just what did you think of your team's passing performance tonight out there? Because there were some real beauties. Well, it's been great all year. I mean, you know that. You've watched us. And, and uh, uh, you know, it's, it's probably our best attribute. You know, it's a, the reason why we have such good balance. And it's the reason why, uh, you know, we scored so well in the paint, uh, even though we really only have one uh, true kind of – he's not – Drew's not a traditional back to the basket guy, but uh, you know, I, I, we picked on her. Or I saw early that Andrew was just making some really, really solid decisions in the ball screens and making his reads good and really delivering the ball. And uh, you know, when he's when he's in that zone, he's he's the best I've ever coached as far as you know making decisions in ball screens. So we tr we wanted to put him in as many as we could and. and uh, he did a great job executing them, and the guys did a great job catching and finishing. We had some good cuts going, and uh, you know, I, I thought shared it fairly well. We we're just a little bit loose with it there for a while. 
Our next question will come from Jim Meehan with the Spokesman, Re Spokesman Review. Go ahead. Hey, Mark, Jim Meehan, Spokesman Review. Uh, they, they looked like they were kind of willing to give up three balls to certain guards yep. Uh, yep. who made them pay a little bit. But then I thought, too, as well, Kispert, only one shot. They were really zeroed in on him. Uh, how, how did the guys handle that, uh, how they defended you and, and get to where you needed to get to? I mean, our numbers ended up great. I haven't seen our OER, so, you know, it's not anything we haven't seen before. They were playing soft and going under some guys, and those guys have dealt with that all year. They were, uh, you know, I, I mean, I think, you know, probably when you guard us, you got to pick your poison a little bit. Joel was shooting 40% from three, and, and, you know, the first three went in, I think, and and even the ones that didn't go in looked pretty good to me. So, uh, uh it's, uh, it, at this point in the season, it's it's not like there's things that you really haven't seen. I think our guys get uh, different schemes that people choose, and, and then they adjust accordingly. And so uh, I thought we started moving the pieces pretty good and making one, two, three extra passes to get to the next action. Then we were finding a lot of success on that second action. Our next question will come from Aaron Beard with the Associated Press. Go ahead. Hey, Mark, uh, so much attention goes on your offense, obviously, but your defense, your top 10 Ken Palm efficiency, you just mentioned them when you sat down about keeping them in check at the three. What does this unit do best defensively in your eyes that you trust the most? And do they get enough credit for the defensive performances they put in this year? I, I mean, I don't think they do. I, I think we've had some excellent, I mean, off the chart uh, performances and, 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 and some terrific halves. And I thought we had a good... You know, once we settled in at the end of the first half tonight and then the, the start of the second half, I thought we really did a nice job. I, I, I think a couple things they do really well is they, they really, really absorb and, and take the scouting reports to hand, do a great job with their attention to detail for the most part. And they've grown in that area. You know, I think Jalen's really grown. Uh, and then, you know, hey, we got big wings and big guards, big, strong, aggressive guards like Jalen and, and Andrew. Are the same so we can switch a lot and drew can move his feet anton can move his feet so it's always nice to have that option uh to be able to switch to to go with all your other uh coverages our next question will come from keith also with uh kxly go ahead hi keith also kxly in spokane coach congratulations uh, we've marveled at your team's consistency this year and, and and you mentioned earlier this year when the team on the other side is dangerous. Your team senses it and they step up. Is it nice and does it help you sleep at all better knowing your team will show up when the other team's ready to give it to you? It's it's nice, but it does not help me sleep any better. No, it was a restless night of sleep uh, thinking about all the ways that that uh, Coach McDermott devises uh, these guys and schemes and what they're capable of doing. Um, like I said. You know, we knew Zagorowski was good, but he's one of those players when you see him live, you're like, whoa, okay. Um, but so, yeah, I mean, hey, look, they're – at this point, guys, they, they've, they've shown their competitive spirit. They've – I mean, literally everybody's been after us from since July 1, right? <laughs> and uh, getting everybody's best shot. And, and uh, so they're used to that. And, uh, you know, they always – they always show, and they're always going to give great effort, and they're they're, and they're always going to, you know, figure out eventually, find you know, what's the best way for us to attack on offense, and what's the best way for us to get it done on defense. So they're, uh, it's been an absolute joy to coach, and and uh, but yeah, I still, uh, there'll be no more good nights of sleep here in the in the bubble. <laughs> From here on out, it's going to be. You know, these are all going to be really, really hard games. Our next question will come from Mike DeCourcy with Sporting News. Hey, wow. Long hey, Mark, time no Mike. see or hear from you. Yeah, it's been a while. Congratulations. Yes. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, sort of following up on what you're saying, you've been to this point in the tournament before. Is there anything different about the Elite Eight game? Because the next step is the one that everybody dreams about. No, I, I would just say, Mike, it's, it, it, it just comes so quickly. I mean, we had an enormous amount of time off between uh, this game, especially when you're not traveling. You know, usually you travel back, hang out for a couple of days at home, and then travel back out here, and there's all the adjustment to that. But 
you know, you're just sitting here. So we had a, tons of time off. I mean, it's basically going to come down. We, we won't know who we play till after midnight tonight. Um, and then, you know, lots of film and lots of uh, uh, prep work by the staff. And this is where, you know, having a great staff, like the staff I have, I, I mean, I just think it's the best in the country. And, the, and they've been with me so long and they're just so good. And, and all the staffs here, I mean, just work their tail off. And uh, that, that, that's why they become so valuable uh, trying to, you know, figure out because it's it's literally a really really quick turnaround we'll, we probably won't do more than anything but a, a walk through tomorrow just to kind of rest our guys and then you know you get up and the next day's game day so uh um, i think that's the biggest thing i've found over the years in these elite eights it's how quickly they uh they come so we need to be rested and ready to roll our next question will come from dana o'neill with the athletic Mark, when you found out that, you know, Andrew was going to be able to play for you uh, this year, you know, how much better did you think this team could get? I mean, obviously you knew you were going to be very good, but how much better did he make you just with that simple decision? Hey, hey I mean, I told the staff, I said, look, listen, if, you know, I think we need to try to see if we can get a waiver. And I asked, uh, you know, Joel, I asked Corey, and then I, I'm sure you heard this story. I don't know. I don't know if I told you, but and then I sat Jalen down and said, "Hey, what do you think about this? Are you all right with that?" And he just got the biggest grin on his face. I'll remember it for the rest of my life. And he's like, "Coach, you're kidding me! Like, it'd be awesome." And I mean, that just—I've found over the years, the real, real players—they don't fear anybody, and they—they they welcome all great players around them. And I told the staff after I met with Jalen, I'm like, you know, this takes us from top. 15 top 20 to top five and national championship contender and, and uh, it really has he's a terrific uh, uh, ball screen player but I'm telling you he's really really done a fantastic job for us defensively and I, I think that's a little bit gone unnoticed maybe and, and uh, uh, just the savvy that he plays with the pace he play, you know he plays at our pace and enjoys playing at that pace and he's just a just a Big time passer, and, and you know, and he's became a, a, a really good shooter for us, also. Our next question will come from Pat Forty with Sports Illustrated. Hey, Mark, uh, just wanted to ask you about watching your team kind of evolve in terms of a chemistry and passing standpoint. You guys always pass it and share the ball well, but but what with this particular team, as you're watching preseason and everything, how did you see it come together? Uh, you know, uh, Pat, I just it it just. We started watching how they were just naturally moving it. And so then I just started just kind of devising little, you know, warm up and, and, and drills where we were really, you know, moving it and cutting and getting next actions and all that. And they really, really bought into that. And then I think very quickly we found, you know, right out of the gate, especially playing Kansas, that, um, you know, that they, they not only like to pass all of them, including Drew, and uh, but uh, they're they're really really good at it. And and I mean that sounds simple and corny or whatever, but it's not just delivering the ball, but the the context uh, with with w they're making the decision with. They all have really good feel for the game. Some of them came with that. Obviously, Jalen and Andrew have this incredible vision. Anton Watson has that. Corey's, it was learned. I mean, it was stuff he couldn't do, quite frankly. His freshman or sophomore year, he became very adept now. We're comfortable putting him in there. Joel's gotten a lot better at it. Uh, and, you know, Drew's great. I mean, that, that's one thing that sold me on Drew when we were recruiting him was he'd take the ball off the glass and lead a break and make a good decision. So uh, it's just it's just been a great mix of, of guys with really, really good feel uh, to make the right basketball play. Our next question will come from Vincent with the Gonzaga Bulletin. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, hey, Coach Vincent Saglambeni of the Gonzaga Bulletin. Uh, like you mentioned earlier, you said uh, um, Mark Gonzagorowski had a you know really solid, really good performance against yep. you guys today. How do you think um, going against him will help you prepare for your matchup against either Oregon or USC? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know if they have anybody that is similar in game to him. But obviously, he's a great player. Uh, you know, I think our guys enjoyed competing against him. They enjoyed competing against uh, 
Creighton against Blaylock and 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 certainly you know Bishop I think was a handful for uh, Drew in there. So uh, you know they're they're fired up for the next challenge. We'll just we'll wait and see what it is. And and you know the teams are going to be vastly different that we play, whether it's Oregon or SC. But we know we're going to have to play great to move on. Our next question will come from uh, Karthik with K R E M. Go ahead. Hey, Coach Hugh Karthik from Krem2 Sports over in Spokane. Um, obviously, you guys are making it to the Elite Eight so consistently now. I mean, um, just in the recent, you know, past five, six seasons, just uh, how far do you feel like this kind of solidifies, you know, how far this program has come and how special that is to you? Well, I hope people realize just how hard it is. It's, it's, it's literally the hardest thing we do in our sport is advancing in this tournament. It's, I mean, heck, just – Look at what happened this year. <laughs> it's just a great uh, case in point here. So uh, it's really, really hard. You got to be really good, and you got you only get you know it's you got to be good on that particular night. And obviously, it takes a talented team and, and a good team, but it also takes a little luck and and then and then just total incredible focus by your guys to be their best on that particular afternoon or evening. So. Uh, but it, it, it's really hard, and I know we've done it, you know, quite a few years in a row now, but, I, I mean, I can't tell you it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to get to this tournament, and it's hard to win games in it, and, and it's something that I'll never, ever, uh, ever uh, take for granted, and I just um, i am so uh, proud of our guys, all our guys over the years, and just been blessed to uh, be a part of uh, these groups that, that, that do know how to get it done and win games in this thing. Okay, we have time for two more questions. Uh, next one will be from Mark Canazero with the New York Post. Go ahead. Hey, Mark, congratulations. Mark Canazero from the New York Post. Um, I know you guys have spoken along the way here that the, you know, the undefeated thing is not in your minds, but I, I, when, when teams are on runs like you guys are and you get to, to, the, to the next higher and higher step, the pressure, the pressure obviously ratchets up a bit. And I just wonder what is it, it is about this, the makeup of your group that they – allows them to play so freely and seeming, seemingly very unaffected by all of that, the big picture, if you will. Yeah, again, I mean, I'm just telling you, I think this, <laughs> we're not hung up on the undefeated thing at all. We need, we, we got to go undefeated from here on out. We got to go 3-0 and if we want to win the championship, which is, I mean, you know, that, that's been our goal all along. Um, but nobody's talking about the overall undefeated thing at all. Um, you're right, I think pressure's on all these teams as, as you get farther and farther along with this. And the pressure comes from a lot of places. I think the biggest place it comes from is you don't want it to end. You know, I mean, our, our team just absolutely, I mean, I, I, I bet if you ask them, they wish they could play 25 more games together. Uh, so you just, you just don't want it to end. Uh, but, you know, there, there's a looseness about them because, you know, you got Drew Timmy on your team for one, uh, and Joel, well, Yayi is, has just an infectious enthusiasm about him. Heck, Jalen's 19 years old, you know, and this is his first time through. He doesn't know any difference, so he's having a great time. And, and uh, you know, I think we're younger than people gave us credit all year, and I think they, this team deserves a lot of, of credit for that. You know, this uh, Andrew's new to us. You know, Anton's a sophomore. Drew's a sophomore. So, uh, uh, you know, Corey's the only – real grizzled veteran of the whole uh, group. And our final question will come from Isabel Gonzalez. Go ahead. Hey coach, Isabel Gonzalez, Mid Major Madness. You just talked about Drew and, you know, how he's pretty much the only real veteran right there. How much can you say about him and how he's let this team just on and off the court, helping the young guys and just helping them keep their heads straight? Uh, hey, he's, he does a nice job in his own way of kind of mentoring. Uh, kind of the, he, uh, he's done a really good job with Ben Gregg. I mean, Ben should be in high school right now, so he's really taken Ben under his wing. And I think, you know, it was tough. Ben's jumping in on a team with a bunch of guys that are really close and know each other, and he should be in high school. And, and uh, just done a wonderful job uh, uh, helping Ben get acclimated, instilling him with some confidence, and then, all the while, like I said, with our own particular group, I think he keeps it loose enough. But, you know, everybody knows that Drew's a, a fierce competitor too, and he, he shows that when he's on the floor. But he's, he's got a great uh, 
great disposition. He knows how to have fun. Okay, thank you so much, Coach. We appreciate your time, and good luck on Tuesday. Yeah, you got it. Okay, for I do have a couple quick notes. This will be Gonzaga's fifth uh, Elite Eight appearances, and f uh, four of those appearances have occurred in the last six tournaments, 2015, 17, 19, and 21. A transcript of uh, Coach Few's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports at ncaa.com backslash transcripts. A recording of this press conference will be available in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.baritone.com. Thanks for joining us.